Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'll be doing some step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the screen on a Samsung S20 Plus. If you're planning to undertake this job yourself, I recommend watching the video in full before trying it out. And for a list of tools and equipment that I use in this video, please check out the description below. To start off, we need to remove the glass back cover from the back of the phone. So I'll be using a heat mat for this. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun to do this. However, the heat mat is recommended. And the heat mat will be set at 70 degrees C and we'll put it on there for about five minutes. Once the phone's had five minutes on a hot plate and it's warm to the touch, I'm gonna to take a razor blade and I'm gonna create a very small gap between the back cover and the mid-frame chassis and then add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol into the gap that we just created. I'm then going to take a iFixit guitar pick and begin creating a larger gap in that back cover. As you can see, that's made a, a nice gap there, just big enough to slide the pick in backwards and forwards to cut the adhesive away from the back of the phone. If you meet any resistance whilst trying to remove this, just add another couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol and that should loosen it quite nicely. I'm gonna work my way back up to the top of the phone now. Add in a small amount more of isopropyl alcohol and just carefully cut away at three edges of the device. Once you've cut away at three edges, you should be able to open up the device a bit like opening up the back page of a book and it should come away quite easily, just like that. We'll put this to one side and remove the phone from the heat mat now. Now that we're inside the device, we need to begin removing all the crosshead screws that you can see securing the plastic shields, cameras, and other hardware into place. All the screws on the back cover on this one are the same size, so don't worry if you muddle these up a little bit. And once you've removed the 10 screws holding down the top shield area, move down to the bottom of the phone and remove the five screws holding down the loudspeaker and charge port. Now all the screws are removed, we're going to go back to the top of the device now and begin lifting this metal shield as well as the plastic shield. And as you can see, there is a flex cable still attached to the logic board for the wireless charging coil. Before you disconnect that, I recommend using a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery first to isolate power from the device. Then go ahead and disconnect the flex cable for the wireless charging coil. You can lift that up now. I always leave this sticker attached to this bottom shield and then use tweezers to carefully pry the loudspeaker and plastic shield away from the phone. Leaving it attached like that means that you can just remove it all in one piece, ready for reinstallation later. We now need to remove the logic board from the chassis of this device. It's held down by one screw in the bottom left area of the board. You can now take your plastic spudger and disconnect the front camera, followed by the display cable and the volume button cable. There's no need to disconnect these two cables. We'll take those out and connect it all together. Moving down to the bottom of the phone now, there are two crosshead screws either side of the USB-C port and one more just to the right of that. That will now release the subboard you can just use tweezers to pry that carefully outwards. Now back up to the top of the phone, the main board. Before I try and lift this out, it'd be a good idea to remove the SIM tray before going any further. With that out of the way, I'll just take the prying tool just below the cameras and lift the board away from the chassis. Like I said before, I will keep all this connected so it can go into the new chassis nice and easily. I'll add some isopropyl alcohol all the way around the battery to help soften the adhesive that holds that down. 
I'll put that to one side for a minute and prepare our new pot, which as you can see, comes with the front camera attached as well as the ear speaker, but no vibration motor. So we'll get the old broken screen back and pull the vibration motor out. It's a good idea to add a drop of isopropyl alcohol under the adhesive of the vibration motor and then use tweezers to carefully pry it out. With the vibration motor removed, that'll be the first thing that I put into our new screen and chassis. And whilst we're waiting for the adhesive to soften on the battery, we can remove all the plastic films on the, on the back of the display. The easiest way to remove the battery off the broken phone is with a suction cup. Once the isopropyl's soaked in, we can just use the suction cup to lift the battery out of the chassis. Comparing that with prying the battery out with some kind of plastic or metal tool, there's much less risk doing it with the suction cup. We can now start really putting this thing back together, starting with the original battery, followed by the main board in the top. It's easiest to get this in if you fold back the front camera cable a little bit, fold back the volume button cable a little bit, and then install the top of the logic board first, and apply pressure to the bottom. Resecure the single crosshead screw in the bottom left of the board, followed by connecting the display connector to its right FPC and the front camera connector. Resecure the volume and power button flex cable, then move back down to the bottom of the phone and resecure the subboard into place followed by the three crosshead screws. We can now get the plastic shields back and resecure the wireless charging coil, followed by the battery. Fold over the metal and plastic shield. And resecure the 10 screws back into place. Resecure the loudspeaker and subboard plastic shield by applying pressure to the edges and clipping it back into place. Then secure down the five screws that hold that in place. We can finally reattach the glass back cover into place, lining it up on one edge first for alignment and then applying pressure to all four edges. Now we'll turn the phone on and test functionality before returning it to our customer. There is a plastic film that keeps our groovy mitts off there that looks a bit bubbly and dirty, but I can assure you underneath it is pretty spotless and looking fresh. So that's how we replace the screen on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus 5G. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.